In this lecture, we're going to look at the auxilla and the brachial plexus. So for the axilla, which is a space between the humerus and the thoracic wall, we're going to look at its boundaries. We'll look at the walls, we'll look at its base, and we'll look at the apex of the auxilla. We'll then look at the contents, the auxiliary artery, the auxiliary vein, and some auxiliary lymph nodes. And we'll also pay attention to the brachial plexus, which is within the auxilla. We'll then look at the brachial plexus itself. We'll look at the various parts, its components, and we'll look at the anatomical relations. So the auxilla is a space that's located between the humerus and the chest wall. So here we can see the humerus, and we can see in this space here, between the humerus laterally and the chest wall medially, we find the auxilla. It's a pyramidal space, and most of its boundaries are formed by muscles. So the auxilla would assume this space in here. Medially, we have the chest wall and serratus anterior, and laterally in this abducted arm, we'll see that the lateral boundary is the intertubercular um, groove of the humerus. So we're looking in this space here, and as I mentioned, it's got a lateral, a medial, an anterior, a posterior boundary, or these walls. It's got an apex and it has a base. So a pyramidal space that is below the glenohumeral joint, between the humerus and the chest wall. It provides an important passageway for vessels and nerves to pass to and from the upper limb. Structures like the auxiliary artery, auxiliary vein, and like I mentioned, the brachial plexus. The apex of the auxilla is known as the cervico-auxiliary canal. And this is located between the neck and the auxilla. So the neck being between the head and your trunk and the auxilla, cervico-auxiliary canal. This canal is bounded by rib one, the clavicle, and the superior border of the scapula. So the clavicle, rib one, and the scapula form the boundaries of this apex. The anterior wall is formed by both pectoralis major and minor as they're running from the chest wall to the humerus and the scapula. And the posterior wall is formed by subscapularis muscle, the scapula, bone, teres major, and latissimus dorsi muscle. The lateral wall is formed by the intertubercular groove of the humerus, and the medial wall is formed by the thoracic wall and serratus anterior muscles that lie on its lateral aspect. The base is the concave skin joining the upper limb to the trunk. So those auxiliary folds of skin that pass from the trunk medially to the arm laterally. You can physically hold on to these pieces of skin as they're passing from the chest wall to the upper limb. These form the base, and you can put your hand, therefore, within, this, um, folds of, within these folds of skin, and that is your armpit. So we can see this in a bit more detail here. So here we have the cervico-auxiliary canal. We've got the clavicle here. So posterior to the clavicle, we'd find the cervico-auxiliary canal, and that contains those structures that are passing from the neck into the auxilla. We'd see rib one running around here, and we've got the clavicle, and then most posteriorly, we'd have the superior border of the scapula. Anteriorly, we can find we have pectoralis minor muscle here, and here's the cut edge of pectoralis major muscle, and these are passing across towards either the humerus or the scapula. So here they're forming this anterior boundary. Posteriorly, we have these muscles here. We have subscapularis. We can also see we have teres major running down here, and we can see latissimus dorsi. So posteriorly, we have subscapularis, we have teres major, and then we have latissimus dorsi. Laterally, we can see we have the intertubercular groove that's running along the humerus with the various muscles inserting into the intertubercular inter groove. And then medially, we see we've got these digits of serratus anterior forming the medial boundary. So anteriorly, we've got our pectoralis muscles. Posteriorly, we've got subscapularis, teres major, and, and latissimus dorsi. 
Laterally, we've got the intertubercular groove, and medially, we've got serratus anterior. Structures going to pass into the auxilla via the cervico-auxiliary canal. Within the posterior wall of the auxilla, there are a series of spaces, and these are important spaces as they allow structures to leave the auxilla and pass to the various locations. So they can pass to the scapular region, they can pass to the posterior aspects of the arm, they can pass to the shoulder joint. So within the auxilla, along its posterior wall, we have three spaces. These are known as the quadrangular space, the triangular space, and the triangular interval. And these spaces are formed by the muscles and sometimes the humerus that form spaces that allow structures to pass through. The origin of these structures come from deep within the auxilla, which has the main contents being the auxiliary artery and the auxiliary vein. So blood vessels from the auxilla can pass out to neighbouring structures through these spaces. It also contains some auxiliary lymph nodes and it contains the brachial plexus. So nerves can also pass out through these spaces.